Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm gonna color a party on a card. Sometimes there's just stamps that say, put a lot of us on one card and let's have fun coloring. And this is one of those cases. I have two sets from Reverse Confetti, and one of them has these cute little giraffes, which are so much fun. I think of my little friend Penny whenever I think of giraffes. And there's also alligators. And in some of the sets, they have cupcakes, some of them have gifts, some of them have little birdies. So there's a lot of different options for themed cards, but the stamps go really well together because you can see the size and the scale is really fun on them. And the little birdies would work with either one of the sets, so you can mix and match them quite well. They both have great birthday and other sentiments that go with them as well. So they're pretty versatile stamp sets. So I am adding some shading onto my little giraffes with an orange color, but I put some yellow down because that will help me to keep yellow in the highlights. And I'll be using my Y17 for my midtone. So I'm just gonna smooth out where the orange ended and blend that in a little bit. And then I'll be able to go in with my yellow and keep a nice, bright, light colored little giraffe. When I was doing this, I was considering doing multicolored polka dots. And what I ended up doing was not multicolored polka dots. So instead of having to color around all the little spots, I could have just colored over them because I was gonna use, in the long run, a darker color right on top. So that would have saved me a little bit of labor. But you know, far be it from me to save myself some extra labor. So I then went in with a dark reddish brown color to do the accents on my little giraffe. You could also make him a totally rainbow little guy and make all of his little little hairs and his little antlers. I'm not sure if those, what are those called, antlers? I probably should go look that up on YouTube, shouldn't I? If I do, I'll put an annotation on the screen if I find out what those are called, because now I'm curious. I'm gonna make their noses a little more toward the same color that those accents are by adding a little bit of that dark reddish brown color and then blending it with some oranges to create some nice dark noses on them. And I decided to leave the spots for the time being because if I got done with the alligators and decided that they would have some sort of rainbow polka dots on them, the little, all those little scales, then maybe I would do some different colored ones on the giraffes. But I wanted to see what it looked like first before I made that decision. I'm one of those people who likes to have some unity across the whole card and that was what I was going for, was to try to figure out which was going to work better on this one. So I chose my YG03 and started filling them all in. You'll notice that alligator in the background didn't actually touch the one in the foreground because I did not, when I <laughs> did my masking, I didn't cut out every little, little tine on the back of the alligator, every one of those little scales. So I just kind of whacked those off when I did my, my cutting but it's really easy to take a pen later and fill those in, so that's what I chose to do and not make it difficult for myself. But I probably should have drawn them in before I started coloring, but you can also do it this way and put it in afterward. Especially if you don't have a Copic-friendly pen, it's sometimes easier to just do that little bit of detail work after you're all done, because then it doesn't matter what kind of pen you use. If you do it before you start coloring, it should be a Copic-friendly pen. So now I'm going to take a mid-tone yellow-green and, and start softening out some of those dark areas on my little alligators. And the YG06 has a little more blue in it than the other two colors do. They have a little more yellow in them. And that's just one of the things that happens with the yellow-greens and the greens. They bounce back and forth between being more blue-greenish than yellow-greenish. And by that I guess mean um, more olive color is is where some of the some of them go and others are more of a traditional green type of color so now I'm just going to go back in with my lightest color kind of go over everything and start smoothing out some of that color and the transition and soften out some of those edges just a little bit and as I was doing this I was more convinced that I was going to stay with just some simpler colors, but I thought, let me throw a little bit more on here before I decide if a pop of color is really gonna do it. And I knew the birds were gonna have a pop of something. I didn't know if they'd be red or blue, and I'm glad I chose the blue. 
but I started noticing I was feeling like I had a lot of color on the card. And I made the commitment to myself that now I'm going to use analogous colors for the details on the animals. So that my alligators will be all green and I'm just using my same dark green color, if you can call that dark, <laughs> for the uh, scales. And then for my little giraffes, I'm gonna use that same reddish brown color. And as I said, you can get crazy with it and make it a serious party on a card with all sorts of rainbow colors. But then I, I didn't decide to go there because it tends not to be my style. So now I'm gonna go in with that pen. I decided I was frustrated enough with myself for not doing it to just fill in those areas. With Copics, there are different kinds of Copic multi-liners. There are some that have an SP in their name and those are refillable and you can replace the nibs on them. The other kind are not refillable, but they're less expensive. So you can choose which ones you might like to have. I would suggest perhaps a 0.2 and a 0.5 are pretty standard for sizes that would go with most of your stamped images. So I filled in the rest of the details with the same kinds of colors that I used on the rest of the card. I'll add some really quick background underneath them, just a little shading. And when you do shading like this, just let it fade out to a point on either side, get a little fatter in the middle, and then go over with a lighter color and soften it out and let it be pretty simple. Now I've layered it on a, on a card base and added a sentiment. And then I've uh, popped some design stuff on the inside too, which is always fun to add a little bit to the inside of a card. So I've got my little alligator peeking in. I'll use my same colors to color his little face and add, added my little bird in there and maybe do something on the envelope. What the heck, why not? So we'll see if I get around to doing that before, before it's all said and done. And I'll add again their little shadows underneath of them and soften them out. But here is the finished card, which I think is super sweet. And it takes a little time to do this many images on a card, but it is so worth it. Just look how fun this is. They are having a serious party on this card. And they're, it's just a lot of fun for me to spend that much time coloring on an image. And here's a final view of that inside of the card. I hope you've enjoyed this video today and that you might be inspired to make a party on a card with stamps that you have. These are from Reverse Confetti, but there's lots of different stamps you can use to make a whole scene like that. There's a little more coloring videos if you're interested in some more Copic work. And you can also hit the subscribe button, click through for more on the blog. All those supplies are listed in the doobly-doo down below. And I will see you in just a couple of days with a new video. Have an awesome day. Go color something fun. See you next time. Bye.